I'm the Rules Girl, and this is Court of the Dead Mourner's Call, a dangerous game of area control for two to four players. In Mourner's Call, players are mourners, the allegiance of death, who work semi-cooperatively to unite the underworld and achieve their individual goals. But beware! If players recklessly use Etheria, the power of mortal souls, then the vicious dreads grip will wreak havoc on their world. The goal of the game is to win and you win by having the most points at the end of the game, earned by collecting unity tokens, completing your ulterior motive, and gaining the most influence in the three factions. Players start the game aligned with one of three factions, Bone, Flesh, and Spirit. Players manage their faction influence by recruiting cards and figures from each faction, while deploying their figures into locations in order to gain special abilities. Players must also manage the Dreads Grip, a destructive force contained within every mourner, which might force players to roll a die to determine the fate of their figures. Also, players must pay tithes to heaven and hell by wagering Etheria, the power contained within mortal souls. Players must manage these threats while gaining unity points through tithing, completing Wallow's card requirements, and maintaining high influence in each faction. Mourner's Call is played over several rounds, divided into eight different phases. 1. Ethereal Distribution 2. Wallows Cards 3. Court Card Drafting 4. The Action Phase 5. Dreads Grip Threat Check 6. Pay Celestial Tithe 7. Resolve Location and Guilds and 8. Clean Up for the Next Round in the ethereal distribution phase, the starting player rolls d6s equal to the number of players. Add up the number and take that many etheria, dividing them into as many piles as players, plus one. In turn order, starting with the player to the left, each player chooses a pile, or instead takes any two faction influence of their choice. Any leftover etheria goes into the dearth forge. Next, Deal each player one face-up Wallows card. Players can complete these at any time before the round ends. Next, shuffle the court cards and deal them to players face down according to this chart. Return the rest to this space. Players will now draft cards before proceeding to the action phase. It's now time to take actions. The player with the death figure goes first and play continues clockwise. On your turn, you can do one of these actions. 1. Play a court card from your hand, then choose and complete one action on the card. 2. Move any number of guilds figures from one space, including your crypt, to another. For each figure you move, spend one influence matching the location you move to. 3. Activate abilities on your mourner cards. Sometimes these are triggered during the game but action phase abilities can only be triggered once per round. And 4. Recruit a guild figure or a mourner card. You can recruit any of the 6 figure types by paying 3 etheria. Add your colored base and place it into your crypt. Then, move your matching guild token up one space and increase the dreads grip threat meter by 1. Instead of a figure, a player may also recruit a Mourner card for 5 Etheria, drawing the top 2 Mourner cards from any faction deck, keeping one and returning the other to the bottom of the deck. Take the matching guild figure and repeat the same steps of recruiting a guild figure. Play continues clockwise until each player has passed consecutively. If you've already passed, you may still take actions on your next turn. Next, players will resolve the Dreads Grip threat. This token determines which threat limit is triggered. If a location contains more figures than the threat limit, each player present must roll once for each figure. A player with the Dreadsbane token will not roll for their figures. Rolling a 1 removes the game figure from the game. Rolling a 2 returns it to the owner's crypt. And a 3 through 6 results in no effect. In the sixth phase, players must each tithe to heaven and hell. This is the Celestial Tithe Meter, and this tracker determines the quota for how much Etheria must be paid. Tithing will keep the meter in check and grant unity tokens, which are worth points at the end of the game. But beware, refusing to tithe or not meeting the quota will have dire consequences. 
In this example, players must collectively contribute 8 Etheria. Begin by adding Etheria from the Dearth Forge to the quota. Then, players secretly choose how much Etheria they'll contribute and simultaneously reveal them. If the quota is met, all players who contributed gain one Unity token, with the player who contributed the most instead taking three. Each player who didn't contribute must lose one faction influence of their choice. If the quota isn't met, increase both the Dreads Grip and Celestial Tithe trackers by two. The player who contributed the least loses two Unity tokens, or two faction points if they didn't have the Unity. Additionally, if the Celestial Tracker is at 13, they lose another three Unity tokens. And if the Dreads Grip Tracker is at 10, they lose one Mourner card and its matching figure. Now, players will resolve locations and guilds. The player with the most figures in each location may choose to gain its bonus, like Vadlam Gates, which gives them one Unity token, one faction influence of their choice, and reduces Dreads Grip by one, but also increases the Celestial Suspicion Tracker by one. Next, resolve guilds in numerical order, granting its bonus to the player with the most figures of its type. Finally, Prepare for the next round by resolving any Mourner cards with end-of-round effects, discarding Wallow's cards, and resetting all used cards for the next round. The game continues until there are no remaining Unity tokens at the end of a round. If the last token is taken during the action phase, each player gets one final turn. Now it's time to score. Players receive points for each faction depending on their individual influence one point for each Unity token, and points for their ulterior motive card. The player with the most points wins the game, with ties going to the player with the most Etheria. If still tied, the player with more Mourner cards wins the game. Ready to play? Place the game board in the middle of the table and add Unity tokens depending on the number of players. Set aside the starting Mourner cards and separately shuffle the remaining cards from each faction, Wallow's cards, and court cards. Place the Etheria onto the board and place the Celestial Suspicion and Dreads Grip trackers on the zero spaces on their meters. Place the Malavestros and Guild figures nearby. Give each player player mat 10 Guild figure bases and 6 track tokens of their color. Give each player 3 track tokens and 2 Etheria pieces. Separate and shuffle the ulterior motive cards and give one to each player. Each player secretly keeps one of these cards, removing the other two from the game. Next, each player turns their ulterior motive card face down, placing a matching faction token onto their player board. Each player takes one starting mourner card matching their faction and places a matching guild figure onto their crypt. Finally, place a guild tracker token onto the first space of the matching guild. The oldest player takes the all taker figure and goes first. Court of the Dead, Mourner's Call, launches today on Kickstarter, so check it out if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and subscribing to the Dice Tower for rules explanations, reviews, and more.